Good afternoon, my friends. We are deeply honored today to be in the presence of one of the greatest living Tibetan masters, the very venerable Yongge Mingo Rinpoche. So when I first heard about the very venerable, I wondered to myself, how is it like to be the guy who is only slightly venerable? <laughs> and then I realized that guy is me. <laughs> but jokes aside, um, Mingo Rinpoche is, I think, a, a great gem in the world. Rinpoche is a traditional, tr traditionally trained uh, meditation master with impeccable uh, credentials. He spent many years of his childhood in strict retreat, and at the tender age of 17, he was invited to be a teacher at an important three-year retreat. At the same time, Rinpoche speaks English, he understands the modern world, and he has a lifelong interest in Western science and psychology. He volunteered himself as a test subject for cutting-edge studies in neuroscience, and for that he calls himself, a, uh, I quote, a short red guinea pig. That's very funny. <laughs> funny guy. Uh, <laughs> Rinpoche is the author of the number, uh, number one uh, New York Times bestseller, The Joy of Living, which is the, the book I recommend to all my friends. It's the best meditation book that I know of. He's also the author of two other books, Joyful Wisdom and uh, Zigi, The Puppy That Learned to Meditate. In real life, as you might have noticed by now, Rinpoche is very funny, and he possesses the rare ability to present ancient wisdom in a way that is engaging and humorous. I think we are very lucky to have him. And with that, please welcome our friend, the very venerable Yongge Mingyo Rinpoche. Thank you, Ming, your great introduction. Um, you are very kind. <laughs> Good looking. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and uh, um, I'm very happy to be here. Welcome, everyone. And uh, mm, now I forgot my talk. <laughs> Jogging. I would like to begin with my own story about mm, how I found meditation, and the meditation is help, help for my life. Can you see me? Should I stand up? <laughs> Doesn't make sense, yeah. <laughs> A little better. You want it, you want water? Uh, it's okay. No need. Okay, better? <clears throat> when I was uh, nine, eight years old, I was developed panic disorder. Panic. You know panic? Good. And then I was looking for solution to deal my panic, to get rid of my panic. I hate my panic. I have panic of panic. <laughs> and then my grandfather and my father were great meditation teacher, especially my father. So when I look at him, wow, he's nice, you know, meditating. Calm, peace, peaceful. And I want to learn meditation. And one day I ran, I ran from my house went to the cave, because near my house there's a cave. The, my village, my hometown in Nepal is northern part of Nepal, right middle of the Himalayas, Himalaya mountains. And we have many caves. I went to a cave and sit there, pretending meditate. And although I have no idea about meditation, and just sit there, you know, sleep, you know, <laughs> look around, you know. And my grandmother thought I lost, and she's very worried. And she called the village people, and everybody, you know, looking, looking up, looking me. And then later she found me. She said, "Don't do that next time. I don't listen to her." I did, and I ran 
to the cave again. And later I get permission from her. But when I was nine years old, I really wanted to learn meditation from my father. But I'm very shy to ask him directly. I fret, I have fear, shy to ask him. But I approached my mother, my mom, to ask my father on behalf of me. And my father was very happy. He kindly accepted my request and taught me meditation. But uh, although I like the idea of meditation, but I don't like the practice of meditation. I'm a very lazy boy, you know. I feel very boring sit there, you know. And then that doesn't change my panic because I'm not meditating. And uh, I have panic about strangers, you know, strangers, and the uh, snowstorm. During the winter, we have big snowstorm, and the summertime, we have thunder, thunderstorm, thunderstorm. <clears throat> then when I was 13 years old, I was in India, a place called Palpung uh, Shrabling Monastery. And there's a traditional three-year retreat going to start for three years. And I really want to join in retreat because then I thought I can meditate because the retreat for three years. And, and I joined in three year retreat. The first year of retreat, my panic got worse, stronger. And um, because I'm lazy, not busy, but lazy. Then I thought, okay. I'm so unhappy because my panic gets stronger. Then one day I ask question to myself. Still I have two more years to go. So do you really want to spend two more years like this unhappy with the panic? Or do you really want to learn meditation with my panic? And I make a decision that yes, I'm going to learn, I'm going to practice meditation with my panic. And I sat in my room for three days, each in the retreat, in the retreat for three years, you know. We have retreat center, and 15 of us together. And everybody has individual room. And every day we join together, practice together for two or three hours, group practice. And I didn't join for group practice, sit in my room alone for three, uh, three days. And after that, my panic was gone. Why? I try to make friends with my panic. And I use my panic as support for my meditation. What I found is, there's two ways to make your panic bigger and stronger. And no matter what I call, yes sir, and hey, get out. Do you know yes sir? What is the meaning of yes sir? Yeah, no? How many of yes? Raise your hand. <laughs> and hey, get out. You know that? If so, raise your hand. Good. <coughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, <clears throat> the meaning is yes, sir. Meaning is you believe, I believe in my panic. Whatever panic tells you a message, you say yes, sir. Problem, yes, sir. Terrible, yes, sir. Here's a problem, there's a problem. Everybody's problem, miserable, terrible. Yes sir, yes sir. And you totally believe. And second, hey, get out, is you don't like your panic. And you have panic of panic, fear of panic. You, you try to fight with the panic. If you say yes sir to panic, and the panic become your boss, bad boss, not the good boss. You know. Maybe some of boss are here, you know. I'm not saying all the boss are bad. <laughs> and this is why if the panic becomes your boss, then you're not in peace. If you hate panic, if you try to reject the panic, fight with the panic. Panic become your enemy. It's why become your enemy or your boss. Both cases are not so that nice, yeah? Do you think so? And do you have any other possibility? 
Do you have any third option? Do you think of any any way? You can say anything. Make friends with your panic. Do you agree? How many of you agree? Hmm, that's good. How? How to make friends? Pardon? Talk to it. Talk to panic. Ask question, Penny. Hello, how are you? What are you doing? Something like that. <laughs> Would you like tea and coffee? <laughs> okay. Um, yes, you can make friends. No problem. But how to make friends? You have to know the right method, right technique. How to make friends? Just thinking that I have to make friends with my Penny doesn't work. You know, I have to make friends with my Penny. Friends, <laughs> <laughs> and that makes another stress sometimes, you know. But just having idea that I want to make friends with my panic, only the idea it helps a lot for you. You begin to accept the panic. Okay, how to make friends with the panic for me is meditation. Okay, uh, I will tell you the meditation the next session. Um, that's why, because of my meditation and I make friends with my my panic, and panic become one of the best friend f for me, and one of the best teacher for me. But unfortunately, after three days later, panic was gone. So now I miss my friend. <laughs> but one 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 of the, my best friend is gone. But I have some other friends, you know. I have plenty of friends. There's no panic, but there's another program, another obstacles, another problems. So you can find friends are everywhere, because problems are everywhere. They are international. They don't have any visa to come, and they don't have to need any special application. They are transparent, everywhere they can go, this way. What I found, another problem? Just I press, yeah? Okay. Okay. And um, what I found is, any other problem, I can make friends through meditation. You can uh, make it, you can use air support for your meditation, become your friend. And then, I feel very happy. But my happiness is not like, hee hee, you know, some kind of that style, I mean that kind of happiness, but more like, how to say, um, contentment, more like joyful, it's continued. And especially when I'm facing problem, that makes me more happy. Everything's good, everything's under control, no problem, no obstacle, no meditation. Mind loss here and there. But as soon as there's a problem, challenge, good for me. I can, I can meditate. I met one time in Yosemite Park. You know Yosemite Park? Near here, yeah? There's one rock climber, and he'd been to Nepal, climb, climb the rocks. And when he saw me, because I wear the rope, he said, Namaste. I said, Namaste. Namaste is Nepali, Nepali language to say hi. And you say, are you, are you Buddhist monk? I say, yes. And I asked him, how you know Namaste? He said, I went to Nepal and climbed the mountains. And he said, tomorrow I'm going to climb this mountain. And I asked him, how long take? Five, six days. Wow, and how you do that? He said, I have to bring the ten, some kind of a narrow ten, with the waters, food. And I asked him, is it danger? He said, yes, maybe I may die on the way if this bad storm comes. And I asked, oh, do you have fear? He said, Yes, but I like fear. I thought, wow. <laughs> That's good. Anyway, this why <clears throat> the, the idea here is once you can make really friends with problems, then the problem become 
support for your meditation, your awareness, your happiness. But it's not so that easy, yeah? It's easy to say, but difficult to do. But anyway, um, there's a way to do that. <clears throat> okay, let's finish about how I come to meditation and how meditation helped for my life. Now I want to say a little bit about being guinea pig. You know, as Ming told you that I'm guinea pig, yeah? And normally I'm saying I'm red guinea pig. Have you saw guinea pig? How big? This big, yeah? It's white, white color, yeah? But I'm red. <laughs> Maybe you're also a little bit red. <laughs> and uh, I've been to different universities like um, uh, Berkeley, Berkeley University, Harvard, and especially in um, Madison, University of Wisconsin. And they have studied about what they call long-term meditator's brain. They study about that. And I'm the one of the first guinea pig. And not only me, so far they study with the 20, one long-term meditators, those who meditate 10,000 of hours, you know. That's what they call long-term meditators. And they put me in the big machine. The machine, what they call fMRI, it's very big. Normally, I describe, describe it as like shape of white coffin. <laughs> and inside, temperature is very cold. It has to be cold, and there's very strong magnetic power, you know. If you have some iron with you, then you just fly, boom. <laughs> so we have to take out everything. <clears throat> and there's some kind of tongue coming out. Uh, machine like my head, you know, very big. I shave a white coffin. There's some kind of tongue coming out. And I have to lie down on the tongue and pretend as like corpse. You no know, corpse? Corpse. Not the cups. Because I cannot move my body. I have to remain still. And they put what they call some kind of foam here and by God, some, something which is, I have to choose in my mouth. And they put in cold water, become freeze, you know, become hot. And I choose again and screw up with the machine. Screw, screw it. Because I cannot move my head. There's a big earphone here. And then they put me inside the machine. Looks like you're going into the tunnel. Tunnel, dark, cold tunnel, you know, very noisy. Like siren, siren, very, very noisy. And uh, then I have to spend inside the machine two hours, uh, one and a half hours, something like that. And I have to meditate. And there's three meditation techniques, what they call open, present, concentration, loving kindness and compassion meditation, three. And the scientists are in the next room, having coffee, you know, <laughs> eating hamburgers, and they have microphone, microphone. And through microphone they say, please meditate on compassion for 90 seconds. <laughs> Stop compassion. <laughs> meditate compassion again. Sorry. On and off. Compassion, no compassion, compassion, no compassion. And then while I'm meditating, they send terrible noise. Baby crying and the children screaming. Wow. And show bloody image also. The operation you know, image <coughs> makes you more fearful. <laughs> and then open present. Again, on up 90 seconds, you know, and concentrate. First mission was very narrow, no good, but now they got better mission. Every five years, they update the mission. The first mission was very narrow. I've been there four, four times, you know, and they say, concentrate on something. Yeah. I cannot find focus, you know, I cross my eyes. <laughs> and one of the biggest problem is sometimes I get itchy, you know, itchy. And I cannot scratch, you know, <laughs> because my hands are here. And what I do is just like this, you know. <laughs> I don't know what the result in the machine, you know. 
And should I tell you the result? It's depressing. <laughs> they told me I'm totally crazy. And I was so depressed for three years. No, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> they didn't tell me um, I'm crazy. But they told me first they thought something wrong with the machine because uh, behave in the brain is very high, something like that. And they changed the, how to the calculate style. I've been there, so I have to go again and again. And not only me, there's 20, 20 other meditators. And uh, what I found is by being a guinea pig, a discussion with scientists, I found three important things. First is what they call neuroplasticity. Have you heard of neuroplasticity? If so, raise your hand. Good. The meaning of neuroplasticity is your brain has capable of change. And there's, a, there's potential. And you can change, even reorganize. You can, brain has capable of reorganize itself, you know, many things. 14, 13 years before, neuroscientists doesn't believe that. So if you are born with unhappy, you're done rest of your life will be unhappy. But now they say no. So I, what they say, this idea is out of, out of window. Out of window. And so even you're born with unhappy, you can change into happy person. And not just that, you can, uh, there's many things I will tell you later. Okay, now second important point is, one of the best way to change your brain behave from negative to positive is meditation. Special the the accuracy accuracy and the no side effect meditation is the best. And until now no medicine, no drug cannot replace as like meditation. And then also put it cheap, yeah? <laughs> not so that expensive. And it's not just Transforming your brain. Third important is good for your physical body. Good for develop your immune system and blood circulation, heart disease, many different things. Of course, good for stress reduction, yeah. They give they give us what they call they they have some kind of like chemical produce blisters. Blister, you know? And we and we have to meditate and after meditating and they know the there's some kind of, it affects your, your cells, good for immune system. So it's really uh, heal rapidly, heals very, very, you know, good. And they also did with the test with the people who do physical exercise, eating good food, that, that, that's control group. And um, <clears throat> oh, another, another thing is, the, uh, what they call clarity, clarity test. They put us in the machine. This is, I think, third, third year I've been there, third, third year. And they give me some kind of monitor. And I have to change my compassion. I have to make my compassion stronger, 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 and I push button like five, six, seven, nine, ten. And I have to decrease my compassion slowly, slowly, you know. Four, three, and two, one, zero compassion, you know. <laughs> and what they found is in the, in the machine, um, for me, it looked like stock market. When you look at the screen, you know, on the screen, the stock market is like this, yeah? So I, there's two lines like this. And one line is what happened, what happening in your brain Second line is your description, the meditator's description. And these two are match. And when they test with the novels, when they say, okay, I have 9% of compassion, but what happened in your, in your brain is zero compassion. So it's, it's different. And the second thing is, another interesting is, this new one, I think. They make some kind of like, uh, maybe I'm not gonna tell you this one. This is a very brand new, I think, better day. Um, soon it will come out in the papers. Okay, 
So anyway, three important points, yeah? I add one more, number four. Number four is good for your life. Why? Because it's good for your mind become calm and peaceful, happy, and good for your body. And that's why it's good for your life, yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, now this is my two important things. One is with science, one is with the um, my own experience. Now I would like to share you a little bit meditation. Okay? And for that, there's two important things. One is your physical body posture. And for that, you have to keep your spine straight. And if you have problem with your spine, you can use chair, against to chair. Keep your spine straight. And the second is relax your muscles in your body. Just relax. Um, please close your eyes. And now just relax your body. And please feel your body. Be aware of your body. And be aware of energy in your body. There's some kind of like gravity and weight in your body. Mind and body together. And just relax. Please relax muscles in your face, ear, shoulder, back, and stomach, arms and legs. Just relax. 100% relax, not 200% relax. Why I say 100% relax? Because you just rest as like natural, normal. You can have tightness, tension, stress, everything allowed. Tight, okay. Tension's okay. Just relax. Okay, that's <clears throat> two important thing with your body. One is keeping your uh, mus your spine straight, and another th another thing is relax your muscles in your body. And this two is related with your body. Okay, now that's finished. And next one is I would like to teach you how to relax your mind. And for this is not the Meditation. First, I'm not going to teach you meditation, and I will teach you how to relax. It's okay? Uh, do you want to learn how to relax? Okay. Uh, how many of you learned meditation before? Raise your hand. Okay. Good. <clears throat> now, even you know how to meditate, don't meditate here, okay? With this next practice, don't meditate. Just relax your mind. And how to relax? Um, you have day off, Saturday, Sunday is day off, yeah? Are you work Saturday, Sunday or not? No. What time you finish? Five or 11? Five p.m., six p.m.? Pardon? Six, seven? Okay. Friday night, Friday afternoon, after you finish your work, you feel pretty happy, yeah? Okay, now I finish my job. Mm. This is Friday, and tomorrow, day after tomorrow, I have two days day off. How wonderful. And you leave from the, your office, 
go back to your home, apartment, whatever, and you have small bag, yeah? Bring your small bag. And as you, soon as if you arrive at your home, and you put your bag somewhere else, and rest on nice chair in your living room with big, deep breathing. <sighs> and you just rest, yeah? So rest like that. Not now, not now. Later I will tell you. Just relax. Don't meditate. Because you're not meditating, you say, no, it's okay. We have some noise around here. Okay, no problem. You, you can rest with the noise, yeah? You can even rest in the subway, in the bus, in the, you know, watching movie, you can rest sometime, yeah? <laughs> Although there's a big noise, so just rest. Don't meditate right now. And another example is, um, maybe you do physical exercise, jogging, or swimming. I saw you have some kind of a swimming pool with the machine, yeah? You swim, but you get nowhere. <laughs> So if you swim that kind of like swimming pool, <laughs> or any swimming pool, maybe 20 minutes, seven hours, after finish your swim, you're pretty happy, yeah? You, you finish your, your exercise. But your body a little bit tired, and you may rest again. <sighs> That's one. And do you have any other examples? Do you want to share how to rest? Normally, what do you do in your life? Pardon? Sleep. Sleep. Okay. Drink tea. Drink tea and coffee. How about? <laughs> okay. Now we're going to practice this together. Again, just keep your uh, spine straight, a little bit straight, and the relaxed muscles in your body. And please rest your mind as it is and we're going to do one deep breathing and after exhale at the same time your mind rests okay please breathe in let go and rest your mind as well Of course, you cannot rest too long while you forgot to rest. Your mind already in the cafe area and drinking coffee. That's okay. You can rest. But this is not meditation. You can have thoughts. If you are not forgot resting, that's okay. You may can rest only for a few seconds and forgot to rest, but you can come back in. Okay, that's finished now. How was it? Do you feel a little bit relaxed? Uh, if so, raise your hand. Okay, that's good. And now, <laughs> I'm going to tell you one secret. Do you want to know? The secret is, there was meditation. <laughs> what you did right now, that was meditation. Why? Non-meditation is the best meditation. 
That's why <clears throat> real meditation, you don't have to meditate. So you just say, let rest your mind as it is. And there's awareness. There's mindfulness. So you're not forgot to rest. Although there's no special object of meditation, no special focus, but maybe focus is awareness. Awareness resting into awareness. Not get lost, not meditation. It's two things. Not getting lost, not meditation. Just being. You're just being there. Being present. Not, not too long, only for a few seconds. Then you forgot. You're in the um, pizza restaurant and eating, eating pizza. Oh, I'm supposed to be resting here. How come? You, know, you can come back again. Rest. And that's what we call, this meditation, what we call open present. The scientists, you know, they test in the <clears throat> fMRI. It's open present. And this is really good for body, good for mind. And to your mind may calm and peaceful. Do you want to try again? Okay, try one more. Same style, just rest. Please keep your meditation posture, relax your muscles, and please rest your mind as it is. If you want to use deep breathing, also okay, only one time. Okay, now finish. How was it? Now I will ask you a question. We did this exercise two times, yeah? One before you know the secret, and this one you know after you knowing the secret. So which one you like more? First one or second one? First one more, raise your hand. Both is good, okay. First one, if you, know, if you like first one more, that means something wrong with you, not like that. <laughs> or second, second time more, that means something wrong with you, not like that, okay. Both is good. So first one, if you like more, first raise your hand. Okay. Second time more, raise your hand. Okay. Why? Because <clears throat> this, this tells you a little bit of your personality. Because first time, you like more, I mean second time you're a little bit tight. Why? You know the secret. <laughs> you think this is a meditation. Wow. I'm practicing in the best meditation. Do I have this awareness or whatever you know? Do I, do I lose? Do I have no meditation and not get lost? Both of this or not, you know? How can I tell I'm in the meditation or not, you know? <laughs> I have pretty good experience first time, but I need that same kind of experience right now here. But I think I cannot have what happened, you know? So I, you're, you're, how to say, checking, worry about the quality of meditation. So I, for, for this ki kind of people, if you are this category, don't worry. 
Don't worry about result of meditation. Good meditation is okay. Bad meditation is okay. Right meditation is okay. Wrong meditation is okay. Whatever happen, happens. Okay, who cares? Just rest. And you don't have to know. Is this meditation or not? Just rest. Don't worry about awareness or not awareness, or destruction or not destruction. Okay. And people who lie second time more means normally you need some kind of guide. Because first time you're a little bit confused. I come here to learn meditation, you know. This guy said, rest. But how to rest? Yeah, a little bit confused, you know, just resting or meditation or... <coughs> and the second time, you know more, better. So you can rest. So you lie second time more. So there's some kind of, how to say, um, and second time you need a little guide. But if you like both, then it's okay, no problem. If you don't, if you, if you don't like both, that means this meditation technique is not suitable for you. That's why there's many different personality, different mentality. One meditation technique cannot help for everybody. So one medicine cannot cure all the disease, yeah? So if you don't like this both, don't worry also. Okay, and this why this meditation thing is so easy, so simple, so nice, but there's one problem. Should I tell you a problem? Why I say so simple, so easy? Because you don't have to meditate, yeah? You just sit there and doing nothing. By doing nothing, you're doing something good. So that's the wonderful. But the problem is too easy. That's the problem. Because too easy, you cannot believe. Because too close to you, you cannot see it. There's, there's some kind of cut here, yeah? Hmm. Interesting. If you bring this cut close to your eyes, you know, you cannot see it too close. So you don't think, I think this is not the best meditation, you know. Uh, if this is the best meditation, then I have to change totally my mentality or, you know, something, but I don't have those. I, this sounds like so normal, so simple, so ordinary, you know. So you sometimes cannot believe. So if you think this is too simple problem, I have another meditation technique which is a little bit difficult. I told you when I was young, I escaped from my, uh, my house and went to the cave, yeah? Do you remember? I went to the cave and pretend they're meditating. I found one meditation technique by myself, what we call mental recitation. Say something in, in your mind. Because in my hometown, everybody knows different kind of like mantras, pray, many things. And I choose one of them and say it in my mind. Hello? Yeah. I choose one of them and say it in my mind. And later when I was nine, year old, nine years old, I asked my father, is it that meditation or not? My father said, yes. And I was so happy. So maybe I will teach you. And you can choose, you can choose one word, anything. Peace, you know peace, yeah? And you can choose the word peace, say it in your mind. Don't use your lips and tongues. Just in your mind say peace, peace, peace. Close your lips like this. If you do like this, it looks like crazy, yeah, maybe do like this, you know. Peace, peace, peace. Try again? You want to try? Okay. Again, keep your meditation posture and relax your body and mind. And please say peace. You don't have to worry about meaning of peace. Just say this in your mind. When you say this in your mind, you have concentration, you have awareness, you have mindfulness. That's why you are in meditation.
Okay.Hello. Okay. How was it? Um, how many of you like this meditation? Okay. You can apply these meditations in your walk, in your life, everywhere, anytime. For example, if you want to make some plans, complicate, very serious engineer or design or <laughs> anything, first you can meditate and then let think. And then think and rest your mind into meditation. And think and then rest into meditation. That's good for your thinking also. You become more creative and your, your idea become more clear because normally too many thoughts, too many things, you cannot find the idea more clear. And also good for meditation. You can so alternate. Think, meditate, think, meditate. You can apply meditation everywhere, anytime. Thank you. And do you have any questions? I think people have to come to microphone, yeah? If you have questions, you can come to microphone. I'm curious when you think about technology and Google and Facebook, is there a way that technology can help us improve our minds and our happiness as well? Or is that a, a negative thing? You can use <clears throat> tool for, for practice meditation. For example, one of the, my uh, friend, they have iP iPod, iPod, and they put some message, awareness, peace, love and compassion. They put their message and they're sending their own message to them. Bing, you know, look, oh, awareness, oh great, yes, awareness. <laughs> Become remem reminder, you know. Or you can use as like monitor about your experience, you know, to do to, to many different things. And while you play computer, you can meditate also. You can meditate everywhere, anytime. So I, I, one time when I was UK, I, on the television, I saw this advertisement. You can meditate. This is not about meditation. It's a, a company. One of the brand, brand of the mobile phone company, they said, you can use this everywhere, anytime, even in the mountain. I changed a little bit. You can meditate everywhere, anytime, even in the city. And also good for Google, special Google, to learning more knowledge about meditation, you know. If you want to learn more about meditation, Google, you know. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> I use Google also. Hi, thanks for coming. Um, so I've been uh, learning a bit about meditation. Um, it's been very helpful for me so far. I um, tend to be one of the always busy, rather stressed people. Mm -hmm. um, but in general, I, you know, I have a happy outlook. You know, mm -hmm. I, I like ever-changing series of problems. Uh, I have a friend who I would like you know, mm -hmm. him to try meditation or be happier, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. My current approach is to just do it and hopefully show him mm -hmm. you know, through the changes in my own life. But it's not like we really get to see each other that often. I can't do it mm -hmm. on a daily basis with him, bring him in that way. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on, without going evangelical, mm -hmm. <laughs> sort of spreading either the energy or uh, the practice to other people, maybe people who are more resistant mm -hmm. at first? Because unless they make that decision themselves, currently, you know, they're not going right. to really buy it. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think what you're doing is good, but actually you can share your own story, experience, and you just come just for communication and uh, and special because many people they not they don't know what is the value of meditation. But special when you are facing problem, then that really helps the meditation. This idea of meditation is very soft, very gentle, 
But when you are really facing problems, it can be very strong. It's really good for you. So yes, you can share with them uh, your own experience, stories, and uh, maybe books, and maybe Google. <laughs> <laughs> and there's many online programs also, how to learn meditations, you know. Even you don't have to come to a different place, but you can stay in your home, you can learn also things. Well, thank you. Hello. So uh, I'm a personal trainer here, and yes. um, I work with athletes. Athletes, yes. Yeah, and one of the things um, that's a concept in like sports psychology is getting into flow states. And flow, flow state. Flow. Mm -mm. Yeah, and it's it's kind of a state of being where you're almost so present that you lose the sense of time, almost lose the sense of self mm -hmm. because you're so in the moment. Well, you know, what are your thoughts or techniques on? Those kinds of things. That's my first question. Mm -mm. Second one is um, like guided visualization, guided mm -mm. meditation. Mm -mm. What are your thoughts on that? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> the I think important is, for example, if you have so much concentration, whatever, and if you recognize awareness, what we call essence of meditation, is recognize awareness. For example, if you. Um, rest. Normally, you're resting almost like unconsciously. But you can, this time you rest, rest with consciously. So the sense of awareness there. Or if you use sound as support for meditation, normally just sound. But now you know you're listening to sound. So with the meditation is you know you're listening to sound. Normally just sound. So if you are doing whatever the physical exercise, meditation also really good for have concentration with exercise. Being, I mean, the, when you do physical exercise, you aware of awareness, and then you do exercise. That's become meditation, and then it's not completely you lost in that. The sense of center, you have center, you have peace, but at the same time you have concentration together. But the only concentration, no, no recognize awareness, and you're lost in that, then you lost time, and you, you can see only one aspect, you don't see other aspect. And another thing is visualization. I think visualization is very, very important in the meditation also, because especially what we call, we are, my meditation style is Tibetan meditation style. In Tibetan meditation, we use a lot of visualization, imagination as part of meditation, what we call using imagination as path. Path, you know, path means practice. And because we all using imagination actually, without imagination, you cannot make plans, you cannot remember what your past story, where you come from, uh, you know, where are you going? If, you're not Im you, if you don't use imagination, you don't know how. So using imagination with awareness is really good, I think. So, so you are saying it's it's okay when you're, let's say, meditating. Maybe not just sitting still, but if even if you're moving or doing of some course. activity, of course, that you can still be in meditation. And, yes, you know. everywhere, anytime. Cool. Have a time. One last question. Hi, um, I was wondering what your thoughts are on on dreaming and yes. uh, you know, like using dreams. Uh, for, for meditating, and do you meditate in your dreams? Yes. Dreaming meditation, <clears throat> there are two kinds of meditation, sleeping meditation and dream meditation. Sleeping meditation doesn't have dream, and the dream meditation has dream, but the most important for dream meditation is lucid dream. You recognize your dream, once you recognize your dream, you can play with the dream. You can do many things in the dream. You can meditate, you can fly, you can walk in the ocean without singing, you can jump into fire, it cannot burn you, you can go to the top of the, this uh, midlife, what is this tallest building in San Francisco, what do you call Trans, Trans America, whatever, and you jump, you cannot blow your leg. <laughs> so this is the first step. And the second step, you change your body. Change into bird, bird, fish, so you can see, oh, changing your body also. And then third step, 
you're coming from dream world to real world. Dream body. In the dream, you have dream body, dream sense. You can see your dream body, you know. I mean, you can see your real body. You're sleeping there. <laughs> you know. And the first step is only you learn third step, then you can receive teaching about fourth, fourth, fourth level. Yeah. Thank you. Finish. Thank you very much to um, hear the um, uh, Ming and the organize here in Google. And I'm very happy to be here. Thank you very much.